Welcome to a sponsored six-part video series of Trump Teachings, Gwent. Welcome to the third video in the Gwent Teaching series. This time, it's all about patience. You must calm down and exercise patience in Gwent. Why? Well, in Gwent, the opponent isn't going to kill you by dealing face damage, and you're guaranteed to play all of your cards. So by waiting, there's going to be opportunities for your control cards, for your response cards, to get even more value than you could dream with. If it seems like you're getting enough value, think harder. Because maybe you can get even more value by waiting just a little bit. Uh, but don't wait too long because sometimes your opponent will be able to do things to make sure that your cards won't be playable. So, patience to the right amount. This video features the Squirtle faction. What better faction to exercise patience than the long-lived elves? I'll be sporting a budget Squirtle deck, as well as a actual very competitive movement-based deck. Both of these decks use Ithne as the leader, however, they play very differently. Let's look at the budget Ithne deck. Uh, this deck has the four basic Squirtle gold cards in it, and four silver cards, uh, of which two are in the base, uh, that would be Cleaver and Scorch, and then I've crafted the good old reliable Mirk the Brack, you might recognize this neutral, uh, also in the previous video, as well as the faction specific Brain. And Brain happens to be really good with this idea of deck, of the Squirtle control deck where you want to wait around with Vrehead Dragoon, uh, boost your cards in hand, and that card could be Brain, and then she does more when she is played. A deck features a lot of special cards, uh, most of which are bronze, and you kind of get a toolbox with your Elven Mercenaries. A lot of these cards, when played at the right time, when you exercise the right patience, can give tremendous results. So don't look down at these humble bronze cards. They could swing games. So now let's gain an advantage on our opponents by making sure to be patient and using our special response cards at the right time to devastate the enemy and swing the game in our favor. I shall not repeat Elias' mistakes. All right. There will be no negotiation. Let's try to defeat Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard can get a few units really big potentially if they're running that kind of deck so Scorch is gonna be very key against them I mean Scorch is kind of the key card against a lot of decks uh, this deck's mulligans are a bit trickier uh, you have to find the right special cards against the right decks Lacerate is good against swarm decks uh, I already have the Dull Blathana Trapper spawning the Fireball Trap so I probably won't need the Lacerate but order matters, I'm going to toss the first light since I would not want to draw a third first light first before mulliganing the lacerate. And then let's even toss the final first light since I have a few elven mercenaries. I'll be able to get first light if I want it. Unless I don't want to risk drawing a third card. Uh, but there's nothing that's too devastating to draw here. Alright, slight upgrade. Of this deck, the typical proactive play to lead with is Vryhead Dragoon. Onward, Vryhead! As most of the other cards are there response cards. This already reminds me a little bit of Hearthstone. I've got the Scorch in my hand, and I could play it right now to get rid of an 8, but patience is key. Could play this Trapper. Uh, to throw the fireball trap on that row, but that's pretty low valley. Uh, so patience is key. We're gonna go dragoon again. Onward, fry head! Uh, the opponent has played that weather early enough that I'm going to want to clear that weather up. So let's search for clear weather with the mercenary. The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. With so many first lights in the deck, you almost always get it. And even if I didn't, I would have been able to find something useful, most likely. You blind, greedy fool. 
Copying Emissary. I need to play it before these uh, Dragoons buff the Emissary. Please wait, Your Excellency. I'm falling behind. Okay, a Trapper looks decent since it does hit three things on his row. Though that's hitting the armor and is mostly unimportant, so let's go mercenary. Have strength, my love. And we'll use first light to do a rally. Uh, with this deck, you can get a chain of these mercenaries rallying more mercenaries. Slaughter them to a man! Alright, we've got both of uh, got all three dragoons coming. So the longer this round goes, the better it is for me. Since uh, each turn that goes by, I'm gaining three value. Now that card gets bigger as spies are played. The opponent is likely to play more spies, even though that'll be a scorch target in the future. In fact, I could plan for something along the lines of this hitting eight and then me scorching both. Uh, I think I can get even better than that, so I'm going to go ahead and toggle the lock on that. So that's like one of the plans you can set up with patience. Uh, try to scorch two units, but I think I can get better than that. that is what you folk lack. Uh, we've got the scorch right here, right now. I can scorch for 16. Uh, one of which is getting bigger. And while I did say that I think I can get better than that, Ithne is a very special leader who resurrects the special card, and the cards are starting to dwindle down. I'm going to take the Scorch. And because that was hitting a Brigade, which will would get bigger. I forgive this time. And with this deck, you can afford a little bit of leeway in how you use the Scorch. Because you can reuse Ithne, or you can Come reuse the Scorch. Kazel! So here I can get the Scorch yet again, but there's no point in using it right now, because if I wanted to get it later, I would just hit the Brigade still, since it would still be the biggest unit. So that's Patience. Uh, I can pass, but we'll play Mercenary. The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. Uh, Marduim. We'll reset that to... Six, so that's going to be a very good situational use of Martyrium. Spores. I am interested in continuing to play because my cards are getting out of control due to these dragoons. Uh, let me go ahead and play this since uh, it's gonna be the time when I have the most elves and dwarves I've got six elves in play and one dwarf and I'll target the nine uh, even though that's the biggest unit so that I could have a valid scorch target I don't think we're gonna scorch this board your humble servant also potentially important to put it in uh, to not weaken that row too much because I could... Oh, I should probably hit the Brigade. Well, no, it was at three. Alright, and now, since I am 12 points ahead of the opponent, and playing one of these would probably be overkill, I will pass it over. Or I could play this, because the longer this round goes, the better it is for me. We'll play good old Let's get this over uh, Geralt here. Hail Kerzer. Okay, pass. Even though I have the Scorch in my graveyard and I have a 19 Scorch, I do what I must. seems alright not to use it here. A shame I have no time. And 
Unfortunately, I managed to get that much power off of one card. Uh, it's gonna be pretty tough to s stop both of these bronze cards, though. Bronze 16, bronze 17. And I still have my leader with a special wild card. Toss the Thunder. I'm kind of just looking for a weak card that I can play to win the match. Uh, to win this round. Since he may or may not play anything even particularly strong. Alright, we'll go ahead and play Brain. Who is the one that you usually want to buff? Imagine if I buffed this up to 17. It would deal 17 damage. Would be pretty good on the last round. I think I can get a better card than that, but it's a bit of a risk. I'll keep it. There are some dead cards in this uh, deck, such as some of the very situational specials, which I would hate to get at the moment. So I'll lead off with a rally. Let us see. Now this is one of the times where it's very likely that I won't be able to pick the Scorch back up and use it again. Uh, due to me clearly having the biggest guys out. Look what the werecat dragged in. For the Emperor! So, Marduim is probably the most likely card. Oh! Reveal one of the highest units in your opponent's hand and boost self by its power. Well, we have the perfect answer for that thanks to Ithne, and I should use it immediately. Actually, we can also Scorch it. That's even better. And I'm going to immediately do so because the opponent might have some counterplay that uh, makes the 22 invulnerable to the Scorch somehow. I'm not going to get better than that. This card's pretty pointless right now, I'll go ahead and use it. So, that was a very good card for him to have, since the card is at 23 gold, effectively. The good of the Empire, that is what matters. And I'm out of Scorches. I see strong magic. Please wait, Your Excellency. I'm falling behind. Hail, Kerzer! Look what the werecat dragged in. It came in there! Alright, and there you have it. Uh, the Dragoon's given me a lot of value in round one. And the Scorch is hitting some very juicy targets both times due to the patience and waiting. And now we'll play a very fancy deck, a movement-based deck. This deck has a lot of internal synergy. It's going to use a lot of the sequencing from the last lesson, as well as making sure you use your, your special piece, cards in the right way. Fight, fight. Uh, so, a lot of patience is required no to wait for the right situation. Deck has uh, quite a few cards that it wants to mulligan away. I've got a few of them in my hand. Aileron and Saskia want to be pulled from your deck. Uh, Milena ideally wants to be pulled with marching orders, but we don't always get all of those uh, done. Aileron is the most important one. Let's um, toss Saskia. And given that I didn't draw a commando, which is the other card I really want to mulligan, we'll toss Milena. Uh, since I already have the way to get Melina. 
Wait, actually, I have the way to get the other card as well. So we're not going to toss. We're instead going to toss... Hands actually good as is. Okay as is. We'll be... We'll stick with it. So Nature's Gift gets a very important card in this deck, the Marching Orders, which is usually used to pull Milena, but given that I didn't have a single blue Mountain Commando in my opening hand, uh, really good card to have in your opening hand. Like, there's three copies, you'd want to have one. I'll go ahead and grab the Commando out. Uh, usual play is to get a Commando out in some fashion, and then in get the Milena. Uh, this deck is very resilient against weather because there's a lot of ways to move these guys out. In fact, we're just going to go ahead and Zoltan out these uh, fellows right away. Double chase. I actually moved these guys into the wrong row uh, because Milena doesn't want to be in the ranged row because Milena will move the marksman out of the ranged row. Uh, and these guys like to move as well. And the marksman can only go in the ranged row. Now this might not matter because I'm already so far ahead since the opponent's first play did nothing and I'm up by 29 points. Uh, this is quite possibly a great time to just pass because the only way the opponent will win is by playing two of their cards. In this fashion I can actually save the Melina for the next round as well and then uh, uh, move the Marksman around. And by the next round I mean the final round. Uh, seems good to me. We'll let him win this round if he really wants to. It's pretty tough to get to 20 points off of a single play on this board at that as that faction. Uh, so I'm just going to win the first round uh, at even card parity, which is fantastic. There are two cards in the deck that I don't want to mulligan into, so I'll keep the hand. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in Yaven. I will. It seems like a no-brainer, given that... And I'll take Lacerate, since that last round is going to have a lot of cards being played. It seems like a no-brainer to play the uh, Spy on the turn that you're going to lose, but uh, given that I can pass and make him play a card anyways, it's not really doing that much for me. Uh, but I mean, I don't have the Spy. Uh, lowering my strength, raising his strength on the final round at least. Alright, and in the last round I did end up drawing Aileron, and I'm going to mulligan her away. A very good card to get. Uh, so the game plan is as follows. We lay down the Marksman, uh, we play the Milena, we move the marksman around, and then we play Skags to shuffle everyone around. This card is very problematic because my marksmen do random damage, and if I hit the armor off, uh, that'll boost the armor, so we're gonna go ahead and thunder that now. This is gonna be a really big last round. Let's see, Drought. At the start of your turn, Damage one of the lowest units on the road by two. Seems like a good clear skies. This deck runs a lot of clear skies, three copies, so the weather, uh, on top of being able to move out of the weather, uh, you can clear skies it away, so it's very good against weather. Thank not me, thank Melitale. You're dead already. This deck doesn't run Scorch in it, but does run Shiru, who will transform a card into Scorch, uh, due to not wanting to let the opponent know that I have Scorch. Not only do I have to have the patience not to play Scorch, but I have to have the patience not to play Shiru. Uh, that'll make it so that it's less obvious uh, that I have the Scorch. Alright, so the Melina will turn by turn be pulling these guys out of the fog. And the Melina pool happens before the fog activates. So, that fog 
can potentially end up doing nothing. Ah, locked though. Okay, so here's the plan. Uh, we'll play all the marksmen into the fog, and then we'll shuffle them out with skags. Uh, given that I have to play into the ranged row. Well, how about a game of Gwent? And then we can even pull Skags out with the Mercenary. Don't recognize your own mates. It is quite expected for that deck to be running Reaver Hunter, and then Hensel to copy the Reaver Hunter on the final uh, turn. But that's why Lacerate could be good, and also why Scorch can be good. Alright, so Skags will move all the units away. Aye, aye, soon as I finish my pain. We're gonna hold on to that last rate, we're gonna hold on to that Scorch until the end here. Men of Kedwin, attack! Let's go. Interesting. Must have a Reaver Hunter in the hand. This too is a bit of patience. Uh, I had the first light. I could have clear skied the fog in the middle, but due to being able to move all the units from the middle as well, no need to do an action that you don't need to do. Alright, so the opponents managed to separate out his units to be 13, 11, and 10. Which means the Scorch is only hitting a 13. Is there any way for me to rig this to get even better? And yes, there is. Uh, I'm going to try to first light myself into... Yes, it's still in my deck, the Archer. That specific card will do really well. In fact, it will do astoundingly well. And we got the Archer. Uh, damage enemies by 3 and 1. Just uh, set all those units down to 10. What's the worst that could happen? For him. <laughs> the patience not to use the clear weather. The patience not to use the lacerate. The patience to save the scorch. And uh, make sure that the opponent... Oh, he buffed a unit out of range. Uh, but here's where I think he's great. I get two uses of Scorch. Who am I to kill? The last two turns will be Scorch. Let's see if he can uh, escape the sweltering heat here. First Scorch gets the 11 that he's using to cover the three tens, and we'll see if he's got some way to get rid of the other thing. Looks like he's going to get some way to get around it, but I think I'll be able to close it out with the value of this plus uh, if he buffs the 10 into something else. No, he doesn't have it. So, good old Scorch. And then good old uh, copy of this Scorch, which I don't need, but to give the opponent true despair and to showcase the power of I patience, I guess. No oh, and there's the seven in my deck. Humans have no place oh, we're at it. Rock along. Uh, with the patience of saving your cards until the end, huge swings are possible. And of course, the patience of not just using a card when it looks good. Think about whether or not, huh, can I get around this card without using a card? Will it be that damaging? And there you have it. Now, get out there, and don't just immediately act. Try to get the most out of your cards by waiting. Even out your opponent's minions to be just that perfect Scorch, so you can Scorch three units for 30. That's a good feeling. And while we're at it, here's an amusing moment from one of the games that happened uh, while recording the teachings. Uh, 
don't keep fighting on here. An interesting choice. Oh dear. I got Becker's Twisted Mirror, which swapped the power of the highest and lowest, and I have the lowest after he killed his. Thanks. That is very amusing and very devastating for him. <laughs> 